Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. This week we saw six questions asked on a Facebook post about full-time RVing. I think they're some of the best ones I've seen to date. And we'll give you our responses as well as what others responded to this post. Hi everyone, I'm Jim. I'm Corinne. And welcome back to our channel, RV Into Retirement. Our channel is about meeting new people, exploring new places, and honestly, getting me to retirement. So today we saw, as I said in the intro, uh, six great questions uh, posted by somebody who's contemplating going full-time, and I thought we would give you our answers, and also there were responses from other full-time RVers that were really good tips, and we'll present those at the end of the video. But first, we'll start out with ours, and uh, I want to get these questions right. So the first one is, is an easy one. It's how long have you been full-time? I think it's seven months, almost seven months. Yeah, we started uh, the very end of December. The second question is, what would you have done differently knowing with you know now? And it's a two-part question. A, before you went full-time, and B, after you went full-time. So uh, Corinne and I, will I'll switch and I'll, we'll give it from each of our perspectives. So what would you have done differently before we were full-time? Well, <laughs> the biggest thing is I would have not gone back and forth about how we, what we we're gonna do with our house, because originally we were gonna sell it, and then at the last minute, we pulled it off the market and decided to rent it. So that would be one of the biggest things. The other thing is that we went back and forth a lot on when we were gonna go, and just what we needed to be happen prior to going. So last summer, when we were sitting here, actually, in the same location, we had thought that we were gonna be just doing this for the summers, which was our original thought. But then we kind of got the idea that maybe we will do this long-term and we will go full-time and we will put our house on the market. We originally, when we were sitting here last year, said we we're gonna put our house on the market when we get home, well, we were going to prep when we get home and we would be putting our house on the market for November, the end of, or end of October. That didn't happen because we changed our mind. And then we sort of laid flat a little bit, kind of just enjoyed life a little bit. And then all of a sudden said, wait, we really want to go full time. And so now we were missed that original November date, but let's hurry up and get ready. So I think my biggest takeaway would be take, try to develop your plan and stick to it. The same thing with the selling or buy or renting your home, just stick with your plan. I mean, you can evolve the plan, but try to get that plan really fully flushed out. That would be my thought. I think um, what would I have done differently now beforehand, I think going to do this sooner in life would probably be one of them, but I think I agree with the preparation. I would have uh, downsized more. I I was more hesitant to not have our house anymore, and Corinne wasn't, so we, we differed there. And I think the three-month experiment we did the year before we went full-time really broke that away, and I'm like, oh no, I. I could care less about the house anymore. So that that's that's the response for me. Um, what was the second part of that the question? The after, what would we, now that we've been doing it, what would we have done differently? Yes, yeah, so uh, I'll go first on this one. What would I have done differently after? Uh, I, I would have done it sooner. Um, I probably would have bought a different RV from the get-go uh, to go full-time. So we've been through three RVs in three years. Who doesn't do that though? Now, I'm not, I, for the people who have done it right the first time, congratulations, but so many people, it seems like they don't get what they're gonna end up in. There's nothing, there's nothing <laughs> shocking that I would say, oh, 
um, now that we're full time, I would have done this, that, or the other thing. I, th I think taking a, a three month summer during our preparation phase away from the house was more than enough to prepare us. And so I, I feel like the transition into full-time life was very easy. How about for you? I don't know that there's a lot I would have done differently. Yes, there were some things I probably wouldn't have brought with me, even though I felt like I wasn't bringing in a lot, but I didn't need all the stuff I brought. Um, we're, when we go back to our hometown, this November, I'm trying to think when we're gonna go. Um, in November, we already have, I'm developing a list already of things that I wanna offboard. But there are a couple things I didn't bring so that I want to. So maybe it's gonna be an exchange. It's just not knowing exactly what you need and what you don't need. It's not even need, it's like what you're gonna use. And I think for me, a lot of it is, it's almost all of it is kitchen stuff. Not knowing how I'm going to really cook, um, and how, what, what things I need. So for instance, I mean, this gets a little detailed, but for instance, one of the things that I'm really disappointed, I don't have, I don't have my food processor and there were things that I want to make and I don't have that. So I can't make them now, even though I do have a Vitamix, still not that I can't do everything I can do in my, my food processor. So that's one thing. And then there are little things that I don't need. Like I brought all these like trivets and things. I, I don't need those. I'm going to bring those back. Yeah, we do have a storage shed back in our hometown, and we do swing by there for yeah. a couple of reasons, doctor visits, dentist, um, eyeglasses, and we have a storage center there where we can drop more stuff off and pick mm -hmm. up anything uh, that we be, may be missing. So the third question was, um, do you advise selling your home or not? And so... That's a tough question. It really, there's a lot of things that go into that. So it depends on the market where you live. It depends on your um, finances that you have. So originally, as Corinne said earlier, we were going to sell our home. We had it on the market for all of a half a day. And uh, our situation's a little unique. You know, we live in an active adult community. Uh, in Arizona, it's a pretty desirable community and it has a very active rental market for that community. And after getting uh, so many people interested in our house on the first day, we decided, no, we're not going to do, do that. We're going to lease it instead. And I think that's turned out to be a, a very good decision. Uh, it, our house has appreciated almost 70 to $80,000 since we decided to put it on the market. And so we, we did lease it out and I'm very comfortable renting it. And because it's an active adult community, we're not worried about uh, the place being trashed, so to speak, or parties or things like that. So um, happy with that. I think I would do that again. How about you? That's a good question. I think I would do what we did. We rented. And yes, we have a, our house has appreciated a lot. I also know that the market right now is still really hot. It's starting to cool down a little bit. So will our value go down? It won't go down from what we owe. So that we're not worried about that. I think the question we have right now is, in my mind anyway, is do we want to rent it long term? and how will the market be? Because right now, our, all of our expenses are covered by the renter, so that is good. But knowing that a house is going to need some major repairs over you know, the next few years. Not major, but upgrades. I don't know, I, I feel like this still could be some major things, but that's fine. I, I just don't know if we want to do it long term. I think the, the woman that we've got in our house right now is a great renter. She was a homeowner in the community. Her husband passed and she decided she did not want to own a home anymore and she wanted to stay in the community. So she's like a perfect person for us. Non-smoker, no pets. Yeah, but we'll, so if she, as long as she stays, I think it's good. I mean, I wouldn't kick her out. I think we, we'd be silly to do that. But long term, I mean, I don't know what long term is. Long term, two years, five years, 10 years, I don't know. Um, 
So that's still the thing that's going on in my mind. Uh, I will tell you that looking at the, the, um, all the responses to this question, I would call it 98% of people do sell their home and there's a very small percentage of people like us who rented, rented their home. Um, so it, I come, think it, it comes down to a financial decision. So yeah. if you could, if you could rent it and cover all your expenses, and you're in a market that's mm -hmm. appreciating, it makes financial sense to do that. True. Uh, if it's not, and your money could work better elsewhere, I wouldn't sell. I wouldn't necessarily sell my house and dump 100% of that money into an RV, because your RV is going to depreciate. I don't care which one you buy. It, it's a depreciating asset. One of the really smart re responses I did see was someone had sold their house, but they put all of it into investments because that is going to be their exit plan. So they they didn't take it and put it into their RV. They took it and they put it away knowing that they eventually may want to buy something else. So I thought that was really good. Another person said that they downsized, so they sold their house, but they bought something smaller in the same area because they knew they wanted to return there. So I thought that was another good response. And we don't know what we're gonna do. We like our community, but will we go back to Arizona? Maybe, maybe not. We may find somewhere else we like. I can't envision going back and just sitting in a house even even no, though we're in an active adult community um it does come with expenses we have a, a fairly high hoa fee right. our taxes aren't high but they're an expense i mean it's money that could be spent elsewhere yeah let's let's move on to the next question here um Oh, and it talked about furnishings also. So oh, well, let's, okay. let, let's address the yeah. furnishings yeah. part. Uh, we, we leased our house with uh, part of our furniture mm -hmm. in there. Uh, the woman who moved in wanted some of it and the rest we either gave away to Goodwill or, or we put it in storage. If we were selling our house, I think we would have gotten rid of uh, much more yeah. furniture. We didn't keep, yeah, we didn't keep a lot in storage. So we have a 10 by 10 storage. So that was like the limit of what I wanted to go to. I didn't want to go to you know, like a 20 by 10. That is just crazy. So we ended up, and I'll tell you, we have very little furniture. We have one piece of, we have really just a table and chair set, uh, another sofa type of thing, you know, recliner. And I think that might be all we have as far as furniture. Everything else is just belongings. I will say a lot of it is either garage stuff because Jim is a, he's a mechanic type of person. So he's got all the tools, everything that you can imagine. And then the other piece is kitchen because I love to cook and I have a lot of kitchen stuff that I couldn't bring with me. So I think that's where a lot of our stuff is. And memories. So we have yeah. our memory stuff, photos and uh, us some piles of our kids' stuff that we're saving for them. Yeah. So let's uh, go on to the next one. What rig are we traveling in? So we've always had a Class A RV. We started out with a Winnebago uh, Vista. We moved to a country coach and now we're in a four travel. And uh, the reason we switched uh, out of the country coach to the four travel is the layout. So the the country coach ha was a diesel pusher, but we wanted to, we wanted things like heated bays. We wanted the floor plan to be a little different than what we had. That was a, a problem, um, and we ultimately everything always fell back to where am I going to put my four crates for my dogs? So this one afforded us a good place to do that. So I think that was the biggest, those were some of the biggest reasons we made the change. I would have been very happy to stay with the country coach. I really loved it. But now that I'm in, we're in the four travel um, and it's not because it's a four travel, but the layout just suits us so well. We're so comfortable. So that was really, that was really the reason we made the change when we went full time. And uh, we just did a tour of it and I'll post it right up here and you can see the layout and we describe a little more of what now it, it depends what kind of full-timing you're going to do if you're going to be stationary all of the time 
we, you might want to consider a fifth wheel, mm -hmm. and okay. we would we would consider one also if yeah. we were going to be stationary, or even twice a year. So we do know some people that go to the same two campgrounds. They go to one in Arizona, one uh, here in Idaho, and uh, they have a fifth wheel, and they just bring it between mm -hmm. those two places. Uh, a motorhome works better if you're going to be moving uh, along uh, to different spots. So uh, that that's and a little bit less. It's a, it's definitely less um, breakdown and whatever you call the opposite breakup. But um, that was the reason we ended up. Plus the other thing was we didn't have a truck. So there were a lot of reasons. Cause when we were, we, we thought for five minutes before we got, um, we were looking to sell our country coach. What, what about thinking about a, um, a fifth wheel? Cause there's a lot of really nice fifth wheels and they are more like a home um, in that they've got the bigger windows, the, the layout, um, more more separated spaces. Um, but in the end, we ended up back with a Class A because it really suited us best um, and suited our financial situation and all that kind of stuff. I think a lot of people that you talk to that are full-timing will talk about their exit plan is sort of downsizing and not a full exit. So, you know, maybe... Uh, maybe we would do the same thing is uh, down to a fifth wheel and just travel to two places. Right now, uh, the country is wide open to us and we're in the early stages of retirement. So we want to see all there is to see while we're healthy and young and able to do that. Although I have another dream too. <laughs> My other dream is that I have a little house somewhere and I have a little, like a little travel trailer that I can pull and I can go away for a few weeks at a time. So we, we don't know. Right now, this is what we're doing. We love it. Um, we're very happy, um, but we're, we keep everything open, keep all options open because you never know where it takes you. Yeah, and when you're thinking about a rig and, and I see a lot of times it's posted on Facebook, oh, um, will this fit into a national park? We, as a full-timer or even a part-timer, you would, it, it's, first of all, it's very difficult these days to get, <laughs> get into in. a national park. Um, and size certainly does uh, make a difference, but you can only stay a max of 14 days. Some of them are, uh, like last year, a lot of things were closed due to COVID. So it, I wouldn't say bank on, uh, staying in national parks uh, as, as your means of full-time living. The, the next question was, are we glad that you did it? Glad that we did it. <laughs> yes. Yep, <laughs> there's no question about it. Yeah. I, I can't even imagine going yeah. back to the way no. it was and staying home. And uh, I think one of the things we found we did is we would go shopping a lot go yeah. to stores. So, uh, yeah, there's things to do, but I mean, Arizona's blasting hot in the summer and uh, you, you do the same old things where in this, this lifestyle, you travel and you become part of the community. So you become part of the community in the town that you're staying in and you become part of the community in the campground and you meet people. And after a while, you meet people several times in several different places, the same people, and you yeah. develop friends. We've made so many more friends here than we have in our uh, home neighborhood. And we've traveled with them and we will travel. We have plans to travel with a few others. Um, so that's something we never, not us anyway, we're not those, we're not, we're not the most outgoing people. We are um, social to an extent, but we're not, especially when we're in a house, I think this brings out more um, socialness for us, especially for you, because I'm probably a little bit more, um, but I work. So because I work, I don't really get to be social. I have to be on work most of the week. So um, when I retire, that'll be different, hopefully. And hopefully we'll both be able to be out meeting more people. But Jim is very different on the road. Um, he's the person that's now connecting me with people, which is the funniest <laughs> thing, because that was never the way it was. In the past, it would have been me connecting him, but. All you have to do is take a walk around Deer RV it's, Park and um, 
uh, you meet yeah. people, and people come. I had a guy come knock on our door the other day, and he had the same type of rig as us. And next thing I know, you know, he owned a business of uh, bourbon trail tours in in Kentucky, and he's bringing me a bottle of bourbon. So now you're a uh, what is it? A whiskey sour? <laughs> yeah, my son got <laughs> Who knew? into that. He's not a drinker, and he's drinking his whiskey sours. But it's great. Okay, so now the last question, and that is, what advice would you give to those who are considering going full-time? Well, um, there's a lot of things. I, I have this saying that I've picked up, I didn't originate it, but uh, it, it, it has to do with the finances, and a lot of people who look at this think of the finances, and, and my saying is, that nobody on their deathbed wished that they had more money. They wished that they did more in life. And we try to, or at least I try to follow that principle and enjoy every moment of every day. And uh, this is the way to do it. So for me, I think it's the same thing. Cause when I originally started, I was on a one, well, I was actually on a probably a two to three year retirement plan. That was what it was. I was probably planning on retiring probably in two to three years, but quickly realized that I wasn't able to do as much as I wanted to because work, even though I'm able to be remote and I'm very thankful for that, I miss most of the day. And the day is where I really want to be outside. I want to be doing things. I want to be meeting people. I want to be able to explore the area. And so it's all con still compacted into just that weekend. And for me, um, that really is not enjoying this to the extent that I can. So I've moved my retirement date up to be next year. So it was a lot of decision making, a lot of trying to get at ease with this because in my mindset, do I have enough money? I hope I do. I've done a lot of planning. Um, I've done a lot of modeling. Um, we've made some decisions with investments. Uh, so <laughs> that's for me, I think it's the same thing. Life is short. Let's just do it, enjoy it. I'm, I'm here right now. I'm, in, I'm able to, um, I'll be able to enjoy it. If I didn't do it now, would I, and I put it off for another couple of years, we don't know what my health is gonna be, we don't know what your health's gonna be, we just don't know. So anyway, that would be my advice, is just do and live the life that you wanna live. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you're gonna save money at, although you can, so, and we're gonna do yes. a video on that uh, soon, so look for that in the future, but uh, you, you could do this uh, so many ways. You could do it dirt cheap, and uh, cheaper than staying in a house, or you could do it um, lavishly or anywhere in between. And we choose to be just comfortable. Yeah. And uh, I think we're in between. Yeah. I, we're not lavish, but we're in between. Um, but yes, you can do it very cheaply. I don't know um, with a diesel pusher if you can do it really cheap because you always have repairs and things like that and maintenance. And so that's not considered really cheap. But for us, um, it is. It's definitely cost us a little bit more than living in the house, but we have the house covered. We got rid of all our debt. So we have money that we're spending on debt that is now spending, and we're spending into our lifestyle. So yeah. that works. And I think, you know, when we say it costs more, we don't take into account vacations that we used to take True. when we lived in a house. True. So True. Uh, those used to cost quite a bit. So let's talk about some of the answers that other people uh, gave. Yeah, there was some really good ones. So one was don't overpay and buy lots of supplies and gadgets, which someone is, probably likes to do. But yes, that would be a good one. Um, plan ahead, uh, but keep some of the flexibility in your in your plan. So some people, a lot of people, and we're the same way, like to plan ahead, like a year out if we can. Um, we already know what we're doing most of into next year, but you have to have flexibility because things do happen. Um, repairs like we've had, um, or you might just say, oh, I really, I'm, I'm only 100 miles or 200 miles from this area. I really didn't realize it was such a great area. I'd like to go explore it. So be able to change your plans. Yeah, we met a couple a uh, few weeks ago, actually. And what they did is uh, wherever they stayed, they had a 100 mile 
a perimeter that they would use to travel and see the site. So they'd leave their RV at that park and uh, do day trips within that, that time frame. And by the way, doing that, and that's really what our thought process is, saves you a lot in fuel because now you're not traveling so much. And break up the breakdown and whatever it is, the build up, <laughs> putting together bad, bad, everything, um, is, a, is, is some work. Um, and if you're doing it on an almost daily basis, it becomes tiring and it's really not the way we want to do it. And I think it's probably not the way some other people want to do it. So. I think quickly fuel can become your biggest expense if you're moving. I mean, sure. we met some people that they moved every couple of days and some moved every couple yeah. of weeks and we're talking full timers mm -hmm. and um, yeah. you got to have really deep pockets to do that and and I don't know if I want to do that because it goes back to becoming part of the community yeah. and enjoying it and really getting to know a town rather than a vacation or hitting the, the check marks as the things to see and do. So we agree. Uh, slow down onto the, just piggybacking off what you just said, slow down in your travel. Uh, it's also not necessarily a cheaper way to live, which is true. One of the, one question, one, one concern of someone was, you know, you should talk about before who's going to be doing the driving. Is it just going to be the one person or are both of you going to share in driving? And where you wouldn't think of that is such a big deal, but it's kind of a big deal, especially if you have six to eight hour driving days, it could become very stressful. So I am going to, um, learn how to drive. I'm right now not driving, but I will. And I've always felt like it's important that I know how to. I won't be the primary, but I will make sure I do some driving um, each trip. That way, um, if in an emergency, I'm able to pick up and just drive. Well, hopefully. I think, you know, along the, the lines of driving, driving a Class A is certainly easier than in a pickup or a Class C. Um, I think driving though an RV in general is a lot more technical and yeah. um, so the, the days can become long and uh, the, you find yourself sometimes that there is nowhere to stop in between and you might end up doing a, a nine, 10 hour day and being able to switch off every three hours would really make a difference. Yep have an exit plan from full timing. Uh, we, we do have one, we will always have one, we can always go back to our house. I don't know that we will go back, but we, it is important to me to make sure we do have an exit plan. I wanna still have, for me, I wanna still have, probably more for me than for Jim, I wanna have a small home. We have a small home, but I think we can go smaller. And so that's kind of where I'm at with that have an emergency account because things do break. Make sure you have the money. And we've said that before, make sure you know you have money to fix the things that you need to and you're full timing, this is your home. You need to, number one, fix things, but you also need to sometimes upgrade. You also need to be ahead of it sometimes. Uh, right now we're in a rather remote place. It's a town, but it still doesn't have all the services of a city. So we do, you do have to plan ahead and say, I want to make sure, hey, if this is going to be going in the next few months, maybe I want to do that ahead of time. If you're traveling with pets, have your records with you, which I do. And I, um, what I do is I keep it on OneDrive and I also have a copy on, it's on the note thing um, on my Android. So that way I can access my records at any point. We scan them. So I suggest that that is really important because you never know what happens um, if you have to bring your pets in for an emergency or someone stops you and wants to know, but that way you can show them. Make sure that you and your partner are on the same page about going full time. So a lot of discussion needs to happen and we certainly had a lot of discussion over the course of probably a year or so before we made the decision to go. And again, Jim mentioned, but I was really more for going full-time, getting rid of everything, 
because I wanted the adventure and he was a little bit more like, well, let's stay with the house, let's, let's keep the house. So it was very hard to get him to move, but you have to go through those conversations. You have to go out, you just have to be on the same page because otherwise what's gonna happen is one of you is gonna not be on that page and when you get out, they're gonna be like, I hate this. I think the house is more like an anchor. So, uh, yes. it, you know, that's, that's the way it felt afterwards. And it's, it, it's, it's like, let your money do something else for you. It's the American dream. We were brought up that your house is what you're striving for. So it, it just, it's, it's, it's going against the convention we were raised with. Medical insurance in your network, make sure that your network covers where you're going to be traveling. Lucky for us, and as long as I'm working, my network is a national network, but not everyone is as lucky to have that. Some people have just like an HMO or something that's just local. So you're going to want to make sure that you have that ability uh, because things do happen. Last summer I fractured my elbow, so I needed emergency help. So it, it, things do happen. Start planning early. Um, you need DIY skills. You need to be able to troubleshoot. You need to be able to do some of the repairs or at least some of the maintenance yourself because it can save you a lot of money. As far as maintenance is concerned, there are a lot of good forums out there. I would say Facebook, but Facebook you get so many <laughs> clowns trying to be comedians and um, just giving stupid answers to people who really need help. And if you've been RVing or looking at this, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. But there's dedicated forums to your particular coach. Um, one good place is a, a place called IRV2, uh, IRV, the number two, dot com. And they have everything broken down into the type of coach, yeah. the type of engine, the type of transmission, the type of generator you use, everything. And you can get good help there. And then usually your manufacturer will have a forum also. And I found it to be very helpful and have fixed a lot of things without having to call a repairman, things that, and I, I've been handy and mechanical all my life, but I've been fixing things that I never thought <laughs> I'd be uh, touching. So uh, it, it'll save you money. I mean, it's very expensive yes. otherwise. Yes. You'll bring, you'll use 10%, I don't necessarily agree with this, but you'll use 10% of what you bring, bring less clothes. I do agree that you'll use less than what you bring. I don't know if it's 10%, but maybe of 10% of views. Yeah, maybe 50, maybe something like that. But we were really, I thought we were really good, but we still have stuff, as we mentioned, that we have to bring them back to storage and that we don't need. And then uh, one of the other ones is, uh, the last one is shop around for used, don't spend money on a new one. So that I thought was very interesting. And I left that for last because I thought it was a very interesting comment. And it's the way we have felt when you look at used, especially if we're looking at a diesel pusher, uh, looking at a new, we, could, we couldn't afford it. We couldn't afford it. You, ha you have to, for us, we had to look for used. And unless you have deep pockets, I think most of us really would be better off looking at used and you can sometimes get more solid machines, which is what we feel like ours is. Join some of the forums on Facebook for the type of coach that you're looking for. If you're looking for a Tiffin, Monaco, for Travel, whatever, just join it on, on Facebook and look at the problems people have. I mean, you'll see 2021s, 2022s, brand new coaches all having problems. You're better off with an older coach. Uh, it doesn't mean that you don't have to do inspection or anything, but some of the newer coaches are, you know, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars and you can get one for the fraction of that cost and just put the money into upgrades and save the rest for anything that comes up. Well, you've also the depreciation, the bulk of the depreciation happens within the first, I think it's one to three years, if I remember correctly. So you've already let someone else take that depreciation. So that's another big thing. But I'm thinking back to when we were in for, at the Fort Travel um, service area, we had someone, we had met someone who was there for a while, had had a brand new 
brand new, whatever the four travel realm, I think it was. And he spent, I don't know, at least one or two weeks there. And he and his sister, uh, his sister had bought one too. They were both there, but a lot of problems with the new one. Um, and this was not a cheap coach. Over a million dollars. Yeah. So it, it just, it, you have headaches with any of them. I mean, I don't want to call them headaches, but you can have, you have to know that you're going to have repairs. You're going to have things that go, get, get that break. So, um, but it just comes one, with the territory. Yeah, I but mean, a new one to have that happen uh, is very would be very disappointing. So, uh, just look at everything. Just explore everything. Look at the forums. Look, educate yourself. Don't just go out um, and buy something real quick, like we did the first time because we hadn't done we had done research, but not as much as we thought we had. We should have. We not as much, as much as we would have done now if we were first looking at this. Now that we know what we know. So anyway, that's really everything um, we have. That hopefully this advice um, from others and from us um, is helpful to you. If you'd like to subscribe to our channel, we'd really love you to join us on the journey because we're, um, we're still rather new. We've only been here seven months and we are gonna keep learning new things. And if you have uh, any answers or responses to this, leave, leave it in the comments below. Uh, share with others what your experience has been because it helps those who are uh, sitting at home watching these videos and ready to make the jump themselves to feel more confident in their decision and what they're doing and don't be afraid to share the good the bad and the ugly until next time we hope you enjoyed this video thank you everybody Thanks. and bye bye